Hey everybody and welcome back to the Dev Marketer channel. I'm your host J.A. Curtis and we're continuing on with our Vue.js series, um, learning Vue.js Vue fundamentals. This is part number three. And in this video, we're gonna kind of move on from our beginning intro video and start learning about directives. Now directives in uh, Vue.js are, um, their special functionality that Vue.js has had. It's kind of like, um, I like to think about them if you've come from the Laravel or Blade implementation. Um, it's kind of like all of the Blade directives that we have. So for example, we can loop through with if statements, we can create, um, we can do things like uh, loops and stuff like that. It's like special functionality that's baked into like a shortcut is basically what a directive is. All right, so we're gonna learn a lot about a couple of the basic directives here um, today. And then we're gonna talk about the biggest one, which is the binding directive. And we'll talk about that in the next video. Okay, so first of all, um, I've got, if we go over to GitHub, the link is in the description. If you need to go over there, you can download the source code for today's video. It's pretty basic source code, but you might want it just to play around. This is the source code for part number three that you may want to have get going. It actually picks up exactly where it left off on part number two. That's what we're going to start with. So um, let's go ahead and do it. All right, so I'm going to be working, um, again, if you download the source code, you're gonna wanna start at the start.html. That will give you the source code that we're basically looking at right here. It's the starting point, so that way you can, uh, you can download the source code, use the start.html inside of part number three uh, folder, and then you're gonna basically start the same place that I'm starting, so you have the same code that I have from the beginning. If you want to skip and see what the end result is, you can look at the end.html. And that's what I'm gonna be working on here today, but that's basically gonna represent the, the ending of this video here, so, all right? So the start.html is the beginning of the video, the end.html is the end of the video. So depending on the whether you want the code that I started with or the code that ended at the end of the video, you can get the appropriate thing, okay? Just wanna clarify that, that's how all the future videos in this series will be as well. Okay, and it's all inside of the folder for that video part. Okay, now let's talk about what we're talking about today, which is these directives. Now, directives in Vue are really, really handy. They go right in line with our divs, um, similar to any other attribute that you might be used to in um, HTML, and they're all represented with the V dash um, prefix, basically. So let me give you an example of what, um, of basically what a directive is. And remember, directives are like, common functionality that you use over and over again. They're like mini functions, but you can throw them right in line in your uh, diff. So let me uh, give you a quick example. So first of all, we can go here and we can see, um, this is again where we picked up in the last video. I'm gonna show you the first directive, which is called vText. Now vText simply adds text to whatever element you, you're adding the vText to. Okay, so let me show you how it works. We're gonna add um, that message just like we did in the last video, but instead of doing mustache brackets, we're going to use the vText directive. Okay, so let's go over here to h1. Let's give it a little space here. And we're gonna do v-text, and we're gonna do v-text, um, and we're gonna set it equals to, um, are in equal to message, okay? So let's go ahead and do that, message. We're gonna go ahead and click save. And I don't need to add my message in here right now. We're just gonna do the vText um, directive. And again, all of these directives are prefixed with the v dash, okay? And the v dash text just simply says, add this text to this element, pretty basic. Let's go ahead and save it. And now let's open this in the browser. Okay, so now as you can see, in the browser here, we get the exact same thing. It says, hello, view world. And again, if we do the same thing we did in the last video, let's go over to our console and let's just change app.message and set it um, equal to um, go dev marketer. And we click enter and you can see it's binding in exactly the same way as it did before. The difference now is though we use this directive to place it instead of the, uh, mustard, the mu mustache brackets, okay? So that just kind of gives you an idea for kind of some of the stuff that this does. Now let's take a look at a couple of the other directives that you might want to use um, 
depending on the situation. And then we'll talk about some of the advanced ones at the end. So another one you can use in addition to vText is vHTML. vHTML is going to be, um, it does the exact same thing as vText. It inserts this into this element, but it will insert actual HTML. It won't, um, it, it, like the inner HTML attributes. So you might be familiar with, if you did something like, um, in JavaScript, you'd use this dot inner HTML. Is it dot inner HTML like that? And you could insert HTML inside of an element. That's basically what this does. All right, so we do vHTML, and then we're gonna add message. What we can do here is add another um, you know, data set actually, and we'll say, um, we'll do an intro. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert HTML in here. So we're going to say, welcome to the tutorial. But then we're going to add this small attribute, and this is something an HTML attribute, and we'll just say it is all about view.js. Okay? So now this is actually this string here includes HTML, and with this vHTML, let's change this to intro, and it should now uh, pair with this. So let's go ahead and save this, move back over, and sure enough, you can see it says welcome to the tutorial. It's all about view.js. All right? So it actually inputted this small. Let's go ahead and inspect the element real quick. And you can see that inside this H1 right here, we've got the text and then it inserted the small tags and this is what the small tags does. This is because we pulled in bootstrap so we have this functionality. Now, you might be wondering if it's any different than vText. Well, let me, let's show you real quick. If you do vText, you're going to find that it actually renders the text directly. So let's go back over here and refresh and you can see that now you're actually getting the the actual HTML attributes, okay? So this is good to know if you want to insert HTML directly, this is the way to do it, okay? The vHTML uh, directive. Cool. Let's learn about another, a couple other ones. So we also have one called vShow. So let's go ahead and do this, and we're going to say, um, let's add another parameter down here, and we're going to say, um, we're going to call it viewed. We're going to set it equal to true. All right. So, oh, we don't need that. <laughs> we don't need that there. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this to viewed. And we're basically saying you have viewed this page. Okay, so this is kind of a weird example, but it's something I wanted to come up with. So again, the V show will basically output some sort of, um, this is basically an operator here. So if anything inserted in here is true, then it will show the element. If it's false, then it will hide the element, okay? And this actually toggles the um, CSS attribute to display, um, either display none or display inline. Um, so let's go ahead and just view this. So we would expect to see everything. You have viewed this page, and that's because we inserted the text right here directly. Um, however, now if we change viewed to false, then we shouldn't see it anymore. It should go away, right? It goes away, let's go ahead. Just come to app.viewed and set it equal to true now and we'll view, we'll view the, the text, all right? And you can see here, if we inspect the element, um, you can see that we have this H1 here. Let's go ahead and just change it now to um, false. Okay, now it's no longer being shown. Let's go back over to the HTML. You can see that it actually is still visible. As you can see here, it's still in the body of the HTML, but it's not be it's not visible. Sorry, I said it was visible. It's still in the HTML, but it's not visible is what I meant to say because it has a display none attribute attached to it, okay? If we set this now back to true, then all of a sudden it's going to... Um, uh, it's going to show it, so it gets rid of that display none, all right? Now, the next one that I wanted to show you, another directive, is this view if. And with view if, it's almost the exact same thing as view show. The difference is that it actually pulls this, um, it actually pulls this element in or out of the DOM, okay? Versus just hiding it or showing it, it actually removes it from the DOM. So let me show you this real quick. We're going to go ahead and save this example. We're going to refresh. Of course, it's, um, let's see, were we set to false? We were set to false. So it doesn't, it's currently hidden by default. Let's, and if we uh, look at the text here, you can see we've got inside of our div, we've got nothing, all right? So this is the closing of the app. There's nothing in our HTML here. If we go ahead, and set this equal to true, 
Okay, now we can see the text. Let's go over to element, and now it's actually inserted the element into the text. Okay, so that's what view if do, or v if does is it actually removes or shows that element depending on you know something in the text. So something else that we could do is um, let's go ahead and let me just show you real quick that you can do more than just put a true or false a boolean value in here. Well, it still needs a it still needs to compute to boolean to true or false or have a truthy or a falsy value but you can do um more complicated i'm complicated in quotes here but you can do um you know more advanced uh, operators than just having the element in here so you could do viewed to <laughs> is equal to true okay so now we've got two different parameters here let's go ahead and say v if viewed is equal to um viewed to then it would show the element okay so let's head back over we don't see the element that makes sense because this is saying if false is equal to true then it would show it which it didn't so then it doesn't show it um so let's go ahead now let's just change this to in fact we can do it in in element here so now let's go through to our console let's say app dot viewed is equal to true now they're both equal to true, so now it shows it, okay? So you can see that you can actually do more. You don't just have, you can actually create operators inside of their um, operating statements, just like that, okay? So just kind of showing you some more of the different things that you can do. There's also a view uh, v else. So for example, let's go through here and let's do v else. And let's just get rid of these, okay? So we've got, so if, viewed is equal to true that in fact we don't need this if uh v if it's equal to true or if this is true then we will show this otherwise we'll show this so you have not viewed this page um okay so now let's go back over here it says you have not viewed this page because it's false so now let's go back and let's just change this to true app dot viewed is equal to true and now we have viewed the page okay so you can kind of create an if or else statement inside of here um, using these two directives now if you do v else it does require that you have a v if above it okay so you have to have both of these here have to have to exist all right so that's v v else we also learned about v show um, you can also do things with loops which we'll talk about in the next video um, and then there is um, you can also use directives for handling events, which we'll talk about in a future video. And you can use event, uh, directives for binding, okay? So there's lots of other things to do. I kind of just wanted to show you some of the basic ones in the video today. But you can kind of see that these directives are like little functions that you can add super, super easy. So you have all this really advanced functionality that's basically by adding v if, v else. You have all this like advanced functionality that you're writing almost no JavaScript, but it's all powered by JavaScript. That's where Vue starts to become powerful now you haven't seen it yet but we can actually start binding these to interactive elements and that's when it really gets powerful once we start seeing the two-way binding in place that's when you're really gonna start seeing the power of view now before we finish the video I want to show you a couple of the other ones that are kind of simple the other directives that are simple and then we'll be done so let's go real quick here I'm gonna go ahead and just um, comment this out and um, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of the other directives so now another thing you can do is that uh, you can actually tell it for example let's say that you wanted let's say you had brackets in here and you wanted to output message right okay so we know that this will currently show the value of message right let's go over here and just refresh we see the value of message okay now what if we actually wanted to show these brackets for some reason that's where v pre comes in so we have v dash pre um, with v dash pre it's basically saying hey don't render anything inside of here this is pre-formatted text let's go back over here refresh and now you can see it actually you know outputs the actual mustache tags it doesn't try to render it okay so that's something else that might be useful um, that you might you might want to know about is that v pre um, and then let's see there's two more i want to show you one is v once now with v once you're basically saying only render this one time now v pre never renders it with v once we're saying render it one time so let's go ahead and save this once again refresh it renders it as you would expect it showed our hello view world now in the past we have been able to change the value of this item on the fly right and um 
you know, it would render into the browser and it would update as I change this. But you can see that as I try to update this, that nothing is happening. All right, I have to keep changing the value of message and yet nothing updates in the browser. And that's because of v1s. You're basically saying only render this one time and then don't bother re-rendering this anymore. Okay, so that might be something you might wanna know. And then the last one is vcloak. And vcloak's kinda nice. This is actually a good one to add to your um, uh, to a lot of your directives because it basically waits to render um, what's inside of this element until the view has completely loaded. Now, it's hard to see on my computer, but here, let's just go back real quick and let's get rid of this. And if you guys watch really carefully here, maybe I'll be able to slow it down the video, but if I refresh this page, you're briefly gonna see those mustaches until view loads, the view.js loads and you know initializes and everything, and then it will convert it to the text, right? It'll try to render the text, but there's a brief second there where you actually see the mustaches. So let's go ahead and refresh this. And if you saw that right there, you can see how it showed that message and I refresh. You can see that the text is kind of flickering every time I refresh, let's refresh. It, it kind of flickers. That's because it show, it kind of pulls in the actual text here. This is what actually renders at the beginning. And then view initializes, takes over, and then updates it with um, you know this stuff. Now, if you want to keep that from showing, what we can do is there's another directive called v-cloak, okay? And what v-cloak does, it's a little bit unique in that um, basically v-cloak does almost nothing. But what it, what it represents is that um, this v-cloak directive will stay inside of this element until view.js finishes loading, okay? Once view.js finishes loading, it's initialized, it's ready to go, and it's ready to start rendering this stuff, then it will go through and remove any instances of view-cloak, okay? Now you might think, okay, that's weird and random. What do I use it for? Well, this is a good example of what you would use it for, is you can actually use CSS to grab anything that um, you know has v-cloak in it and then give it some special styling. Now, one the most obvious example would be basically to hide it. So this way, you don't get that flicker. Everything would be hidden, and then when it view has finished loading, then it will just load the 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 correct element from the beginning. You won't see the the mustache the mustache brackets. Okay. So let me just show you real quick. We've got v dash cloak inside of here. Okay. So in fact, if we go over here and look at it, refresh, you're going to notice that nothing really changes. It's exactly the same way as it's always been. Okay. V cloak doesn't really do anything. However, you can target v cloak using job uh, CSS. So let's go ahead and do that here. Let's do some uh, style tag up here at the top. Sorry. And then um, inside of here, we can add some CSS. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, we're gonna target anything with v-cloak in it. This is any element. Of course, if you wanted, you know, only divs, you could you could do that. But we're gonna tag, target any element with v-cloak and we're going to give it a display of none, all right? So let's go back over here, we refreshed. You can see it flickered, but you don't see the mustache brackets in there at all. Now you can do anything with this. So we could also do, for example, this will make it a little more obvious, do background color red, and then we refresh. Over here, you can see it flashed red. I'm gonna do it again. And that's because during that brief second, the v-cloak couldn't render um, or hadn't finished rendering, it's going to show whatever that, um, you know, the CSS attribute is. When it finishes, then it will remove the v-cloak um, attribute and then, um, you know, it'll look like normal, okay? So if you wanted to style what it's gonna look like now, you would just target it as usual. But that v-cloak is what it looks like before view has finished loading, okay? So that's kind of the value of v-cloak. That one's kind of confusing for a lot of people, but it's actually really helpful once you truly understand what it's doing, and that's basically what it's doing, okay? Hopefully you guys found this video interesting. We've got um, a lot more um, information about V directives coming up in the next few videos. The next few videos are gonna focus on the more advanced ones um, that have kind of more advanced functionalities. So the next few videos will focus on um, a couple specific directories uh, or directives, one in each video, just so you can learn to master those more important ones. I just wanted to cover all the basic ones in this video so you kind of got a sense for what they do. Okay, hopefully you guys are enjoying this series. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And that's all I got for you guys today. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video.